I think uh, Carolyn's uh, comments and the earlier testimony that we had from the representative from the Portland Business Alliance is an important consideration. The Business Alliance is the largest business uh, organization. It's, it's perhaps dominated by downtown core area businesses and that, as I recall you mentioning, that was a unanimous uh, approval on their part. They, they represent uh, arguably somewhere between 60 and 70% uh, of the total revenue for TriMet because in addition to the payroll tax, which runs in about the mid-50s, there's the additional compensation these employers pay in subsidizing their employee purchases of TriMet Pass. We have over 300 of the employers that do that, and, uh, most of which are the largest employers. So it, we have been discussing this issue well before our financial uh, situation changed. I mean, this is, uh, if it produces revenue, so be it. But uh, I know uh, from conversations that I've been involved in over the years, uh, revenue was not the principal issue. It is an issue of equity and one of trying to control fare evasion. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Bob, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, I was trying very hard. Uh, I heard, uh, I could hear in and out regarding this issue, but, you know, as I think about it, as we grow, the opportunity for other areas to have to become fairless and use the green as an issue, such as Gateway to Clarkland Sound Center, uh, the ridership should, uh, should improve along that line, especially it would improve even more if it was fairless. So we have to look at not only the, the financial implications of fairless square, but also uh, how it affects the area that we that we, the area as we go into it. But and the other side of that would be how does it affect one end of the line versus another end of the line. And so I think uh, the staff is doing a good job in taking it to the uh, public, but I think we should take it to the public to each county and they, and that's their opinion as well because they pay a cost as well as those businesses downtown and those in the uh, and the riders downtown because they come from other areas to downtown. And let's find out what our ridership as a whole thing. Okay. And, Rick? And just to clarify, the public process, comment process for Fairless Square and the one for the service cuts that are proposed for November are going to be one and the same. Yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just one, one last comment. I can't wait. To look for other sources of revenue, you know, employers now subsidize parking for a lot of employees that drive down and park in all the garages and everything that costs money. Maybe they'd be willing to say they'll put that money in public transportation rather than subsidizing the employee that has to park in all his garages and let them ride the bus to work. Maybe that would be a, another source of revenue. I just throwing that out there. Uh, one thing, by the way, that and Congressman Blumenauer has been uh, absolutely key in this, uh, for a long time, um, if you gave a benefit such as either free parking or even subsidy to transit passes, uh, the, uh, if it were over a certain amount under IRS rules, it was, it was determined to be oh, income taxable. for taxable income. Uh, and the ratio had always been twice, you could, the, the employers could spend twice as much on parking as they could on transit to, and still be under the line of it. Earl did a very good job of getting that to be equal. Uh, and so uh, at least it has leveled that playing field for transit. What we do find is most employers give an option to their employees if they are going to provide some subsidy on parking. They also do provide a subsidy on transit. So that's helpful. Right. And George, many employers, downtown employers, are offering full passes for their employees oh, well, too. and not for parking. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Just so you know that. That's good. My employer, my husband's story is being one of them. Good. Okay. 
Uh, very good. Anything else? Uh, um, no. Uh, obviously, this will be playing out between now and July. Uh, Carolyn, July 17th is the public comment time. Uh, and as I said before, I think we all uh, uh, very much regret having to do any changes uh, on service. We do believe that two to three minute on average, four minutes at the maximum, uh, in a few exceptions on the outside, uh, is something that uh, is necessary. Thank you. Okay, very good.